Do you know that there is a method to make physics very easy for you? I'm going to share that secret in this video. Hello students. So welcome to this video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a very peculiar issue that every student face and I know that even you might be facing that it is that they find physics very difficult it is like they think that they are not able to solve physics problem as good as they want you know there is a problem which everybody faces and I know if you are also facing the same problem that you might be thinking that physics problems are way too complicated for you but let me tell you it's not because in this video i'm going to share a methodology i'm going to share a secret basically it's not going to be a secret anymore after this i'm going to share a methodology with you which is going to help you to make physics problems much more simple for you and this methodology is something that i have thought by myself and I have just made it for my students all right and I'm quite sure that when you are following this particular methodology you are going to gain or you're going to benefit really a lot from and put this method into practice in each and every day that when you're doing physics and it's going to work out for you all right so let's get into our uh, presentation and let me tell you I call this methodology as IDAS method right it is called as IDAS method which, which is standing for imagine design apply and solve right so I will tell you how what are these things and how will you be able to apply this in your physics problem which is of course going to make physics very simple for you right so moving forward so let me write down what we call this method as it's called IDAS method the font is very small I need to change the color here all right so I call it as IDAS method extremely small font and let me change the color of this font to black right it's called IDAS method where I stands for imagination right and I will be explaining to you what all these things are D stands for you need to design design an aeroplane maybe maybe I have an airplane for you then you have to apply what you're designing you have to apply and finally you need to solve the problem right now to take you in much more greater detail let me take you to the next slide and this slide is about imagination that means you are going to imagine This slide is about your imagination and you're going to imagine here, right? So first of all, when you are reading a physics problem, when you're reading a physics problem, you have to imagine the situation. And this is the problem that most of the students face. They are not able to imagine the right way. And when I'm talking about imagination, it's your spatial imagination when you are not able to do this special imagination this is where you struggle this is where you struggle so let me tell you it is your spatial imagination right now I will explain to you what is the spatial imagination actually is okay so if I tell you that uh, let me take an example if I tell you this is a cube 
right? This is a cube. Once you know that this is a cube, you will be able to imagine all the sides of the cube without thinking a lot about it. So if they give you a question, this is a cube, tell me more and what are the forces acting, all those things about the cube they will give you. But if I give you this particular image, if I give you this particular object and tell you this is a 3D object and this is the quantities it has and all those things, but you might find it a little difficult because the spatial imagination, because you don't know how it looks, you don't know how it feels, so spatial imagination will be difficult for you, right? So the first and foremost, the problem that students face here is they are not able to imagine a question properly. Yes, and it is true. It, and I have kept imagination in the first because people do not, people are not able to comprehend the question. They are not able to understand the question. That is the first mistake what happens. All right. Once the, the, what I mean that they are not understanding the question is that they are not able to understand how the three-dimensional view of the question is. And that's the first problem comes. So first thing, you need to imagine that particular given problem. Read the question properly and imagine what it's trying to say. Moving forward, after imagination, so I'll be a little quick on here. So after imagination, you will be working on designing, right? Once you have um, imagined, once you have understood the implications of the question, then you will be going to the next part, that's the designing part, right? Designing in the sense, once you have imagined the situation, you need to design the particular situation, like you need to find out what are the forces applying, what are the things that is happening to the object, is the object rotating, is the object falling, if it is falling, what's the acceleration, if it is rotating, what's the angular rotation, if it is going with a velocity v, does it have acceleration or what or what not. So you can use the concept of maybe vector, right? Vectors are actually very important, you know, especially coming to physics part, okay? And especially when you are in a higher grade, you will be knowing what a vector is. Vector basically is a entity that lets me know what's the direction of its motion, what's the direction of its magnitude, all right? So vector designing is a very important thing that you will be well, that you will have to master, all right? Especially in your grade 11 or in your IVDP or in your ANAS level, there is a concept of vector addition, vector subtraction, and everything with a vector, right? So I, will, I would tell you that be little good in that. You have to design your own problem. In a sense, once you read the question, you apply your imagination, and after that imagination, you design the problem, right? Maybe in the problem, they might have given 50 kg of object, or maybe car moving with 60 meter per second velocity. Now you design it. After you imagine it, you design the physics, what is happening there. And one example, I can just say, you are just using the vectors to understand the forces acting on it and the different implications of it. Moving forward, after design, I will be having apply, right? And let me tell you what this, this, this thing is and where many students fail is they don't learn the formula. Apply, when I talk about apply, it means you need to apply the formula. You need to know the formula right you need to know the formula and you need to apply all right you need to apply the formula because once you do not know the formula it will not be possible for you to apply right once you do not know the formula it will not be very much possible to apply so this is very much important many students do not 
read the formula and come to the exam many students who are even going for the preparing for the competitive exam they do not know the appropriate formula to apply once you have imagined the situation once you have designed your problem accordingly you need to know the formula isn't it you need to know the formula if you do not know the formula then what's the use of doing physics at the end you need to know the formula a appropriate formula whatever is required to apply there and once you know the formula you just have to apply the formula right now when you go to higher grades it's more than a formula it's not just formula anymore here when you talk about competitive examination along with formula you need to know some tools such as integration and differentiation i know that some people are able to connect it what i'm talking about differentiation all right differentiation right i hope you are able to relate it what i'm telling many people who are preparing for a competitive examination integration and differentiation is your friend okay so you need to apply a proper formula either it can be a proper you need to create a solvable equation here okay apply and create a solvable equation so i will say solvable equation and this equation you need to create the it will not be given the question you need to create this particular equation you need to create a solvable equation here and in order to create a solvable equation you might have to apply plus minus divide all the simple mathematics this is where the mathematics comes into the picture right you might have to know integration differentiation okay with the help of integration differentiation when you apply integration differentiation in that particular situation it is going to give you an equation or it is going to give something to solve once you apply a formula or once you apply integration or differentiation or if you create any type of solvable equation it can be linear equation it can be linear inequality or it can also be quadratic equation you simply get a equation once you apply it right and of course to know to apply and to get the equation you need to know the formula and then we come to the last and the most easiest part that everybody can do but everybody cannot reach okay the last part is called as the solve simple solve what you are got okay just solve what you have got solve the equation what you have got solve the differentiation integration that you have received got solve anything that you are getting with the formula you just need to solve it and solving is very important i mean not important this is solving is something very easy right you are trained to solve not to imagine design and apply you are though solving is very important you are not able to reach there because you are not imagining properly the first road block itself you hit the road block you are not able to imagine properly you are not able to imagine and that is a problem so solving is something easy so solving and i talk about solving solve the equation that you got solve the equation that you have created solve the equation that you created right not the person who's making the question of course the person who made who's making the question has given you the direction to create a equation okay because he has told you imagine this is happening that is happening then you imagine you design then you create an solvable equation in application once you have got the equation you just have to solve it do not do calculation errors okay i know many people are doing calculation errors do not do calculation error you just have to solve it okay once you solve it you have got the answer for your physics problem 
Now, this is a method which I'm recommending to you. Anyways, I'm going to show you a problem. Okay. Aeroplane is going, you know, aeroplane is going, it is tilted a little bit. And in this problem, I remember this problem and I will quickly tell you what are they giving in this problem. In this problem, they are saying that aeroplane is going and the gravity is acting on the aeroplane, which is Fg. Fg is the gravitational force acting on the object. And they are saying there is an upward thrust, upward thrust. Okay, thrust means something that lifts an object when they are in air. There is an upward thrust acting 30 degree to the vertical. You know what's vertical? Vertical is a, a line which is opposite to gravity. And there is a upward thrust acting in the vertic, uh, making 30 degree to the vertical. So I will create a line here acting 30 degree to the vertical. That means this is somewhere right 30 degree is approximately 30 degree they're asking an upward thrust formula i'll put ft they're asking what is the yeah what is the net force and which direction it is so technically uh, you here itself i have designed the problem so in the question they have given all this entity when it comes to so when I, I'll imagine an aeroplane is going in this way they have just given a diagram so I will imagine that when the aeroplane is going in this way weight is acting downward fg and they have told me that thrust is acting 30 degree from the vertical so I made a vertical line and I made 30 degree with 30 degree to it and look here I have two what I have two vectors they're asking what's the resultant and they're asking what is the what do you call they're asking what is my direction okay so i have applied and here you know i have designed it also i applied it i understood i imagine sorry i imagined it okay and i drew it so when I drew it, that is where I designed the problem. I had designed it according to what is given in the question. I didn't do anything new. I designed it according to what is given in the question. And after that, you know, and after that, you apply. What did you apply? You apply the resultant force formula. Remember, 11 students, Fg square plus ft square plus 2fg plus ft cos theta where theta is the angle between fg and ft it's angle between fg and ft that means they are they are asking the angle this particular angle which you very well know that it's 150 degree if you're not understanding why look at the question pause and look at the question properly Okay, then after that, you apply the, to get the direction, you apply the triangle rule. And when you're talking about triangle rule, this is how head to tail, remember head to tail. So you have uh, the FG acting downwards and you have FT acting this side, right? now when you join okay when you join the two vectors this is the resultant vector and draw the resultant vector here which is in the same direction which is the direction in this i mean i'll say left to me so it is clearly seen that this resultant vector is a centripetal force and this centripetal force is helping the aeroplane to go in a circular motion okay this centripetal force is helping the aeroplane to go in a circular motion so i have told you and i have explained to you how this idas method is worked on now students I hope uh, you have understood this particular part. I, you have understood how IDAS method is used. It is not simple. I know that in first, it will not be very easy to understand, but you have to gradually keep practicing 
in all your problems because when I'm doing any problem in this particular channel, when I'm teaching you anything in the particular channel, I will be stressing more on IDAS method. I'll be stressing more on IDAS method and you will be able to see that. All right. So students, in this particular video, there is no questions, right? As I told you in every video of mine, there is going to be three questions in, in video, which whose answer you should be able to write in the description and there will be shout out of your name. Next week video, your name will be called out and it is something very, it's going to be very interesting. That is going to happen from the coming videos. Right now, I do not have a question, but be vigilant students, be vigilant and please do follow this channel. You are going to get excellent videos and my goal is just to make the physics simple for you so with that i will end today's note so we will see in the upcoming video with then until then students adios hello students i hope you found this useful this video was interesting for you now students as a part of my journey to make physics easy for you i have started an initiative and that is, I'm going to help the students who are in their IBDP level, who are going to take their ASA level examination, and those who are in CBSC going to take their CBSC examination. I'm going to provide one-to-one -one training for you. And in this one-to-one -one training, I mean that it's going to be a personal attention. I will be taking class for you personally. And also, I'm going to make a roadmap for you until your examination. So I'm ready to help for you in physics and to be successful in the particular examination that you are going to take. But students, let me tell you, my time is limited. So I might not be able to take everyone who's registering. So it's better first come, first serve. And students, I hope this thing will be useful for you. And if you want to register, please click in the link below and do not forget to like, share and subscribe to Physics Revolution. So until then, adios.